Hi everybody and welcome to another Dan Live Q&A. We're really excited that this month we're joined by 46. We've got Cam, who is a social media connector, and Kian, who is a strategist at 46. Uh, but we're really excited to have the BBC with us today. Uh, Martin Wilson, who is a uh, head of digital creativity, is here to join us to talk about how brands and advertisers can connect better with youth and understand youth culture better. So thank you so much, you guys, for, for joining us. It should be really, really interesting. Um, before we get cracking, I think there's a lot of people who want to know a little bit more about who 46 is, what you guys stand for, what makes you different. So, Kim, do you want to talk to us a little bit about 46? Sure. So, 46 is a creative agency. We are a youth culture agency, which means we bridge the gap between brands and young people. We work at the intersection of both. We provide brands with new thoughts, ideas and insights and we provide young people with opportunities. Brilliant. Um, and BBC has got a really exciting new project called Mix It All. Do you want to tell us a little bit yeah, more about that? Absolutely, yeah. So um, the BBC has built a website called Mix It All, which is off the BBC. Uh, it's very much branded BBC. Um, but it's really there to help uh, young people to get creative and to publish their creations. So you'll find on the site um, tools that will help you make all kinds of things, from uploading videos to writing scripts but also to publish them, and we've plugged everything into the BBC's moderation, the fantasy films and things like that, so hopefully it's a safe place. Fascinating, and you guys have a channel, 46 channel launching, right? Yeah. Is that live now, or is that about to go live? We've launched. It's, it's live. <laughs> so go check it out. Um, so guys, I think like the first question that I think a lot of people at least ask me is, what are kind of the key challenges for brands who are trying to kind of um, connect with youth culture, Martin? Well, I, I, I think it's, it's just becoming a much more complex place. I mean, obviously, from the BBC's perspective, you know, we've got very traditional kind of media set up, and uh, that, that picture has changed rapidly. It's not just the devices, it's, it's the social media the places where people do engage, it's the ways they engage, the greater control and engagement and so on that's, that, that's expected. And I think also it's, 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 it's very unfortunate sometimes to talk about youth as if it's a thing, because, of course, even in our of creativity, you'll have perhaps the younger people who are perhaps more experimental, more, more up for a, having a go, and you get the sort of older teens, if you like, who are thinking, well, maybe what's in it for me? Is there a job in this? Is there a skill I want? And so on. So, and even with that, of course, there are different attitudes. Some people are early adopters of technology, so they'll get stuck in straight away, and others are a little bit more passive, and they will follow. So I think within this, you, you have to be a bit more sophisticated in terms of reaching people a bit what I'd say. Yeah, would you guys agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I think um, brands definitely have to be more open to younger people and what they're actually interested in. So you find that a lot of the time young people aren't interested in things that brands think that they're interested in. Like it's more of a, it's more of the granular things that young people are into. That you know, brands kind of overgeneralize it. They think it's just music. They think it's just tech or clothing. There's so much more to it. And I think there's almost like an underground layer to what young people are actually interested in, which brands are missing. Yeah, would you say that's the kind of case? I would agree. I would say there is definitely a lack of sophistication. I would also say that young people today are much harder to reach. Mm. So they're not waiting for the messages from brands and companies. They're doing their own thing. They most it's been estimated one in five people block adverts and that's much higher for young people because then don't want to be inundated with messages and products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's fascinating. And if you guys do have any questions for the BBC or indeed for 46 about youth culture, some of the benefits, the challenges, what can brands do, then do send them through. We'll do our best to answer them for you. Um, you know, people talk about millennials and Gen Z as if they're a different species sometimes. Um, do you think they're really that different? And if so, what are the kind of differences? Well, and they are a bit different, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm, a lot has happened since, since, since 2000. I mean, there's, there's, there's the war on terror, there's, there's austerity for the last 10 years, there's, there's lots of social changes within the family, so lots of different social norms have changed. But of course, the internet has, has changed everything in so many ways. And in the year 2000, only 25% of households had the internet. Now 90% of young people have the smartphone in their, in their, in their pockets. So that's inevitably going to change things. So I think, well, while if you like, the, the, the underlying needs of all of us have been, been what you say, I think how they're expressed and found in the side is, is, is really quite different now. Yeah, would you say that's the case, you guys? 
Yeah, I mean, I, th I think going back to the point of the, the generation's different, I think that there are differences within that, and I think a lot of the time people miss that. Mm -hmm. I think people just generalise youth, it's just this one thing, yeah. it's just yeah. this one section of young people. <laughs> But it's one segment. Not, yeah, it's just one segment of young people that exists, but I don't think that's actually the case. I think there are a lot of 16 year olds, mm -hmm. they'll like different things from the 16 year olds. So, 16 year olds within those 16 year olds potentially like different things and explore, yeah. explore other, other areas of culture. I agree with both points. So, to Martin's point, there are conditions which are unique to young people and millennials and Generation Z and that changes their attitudes and behaviours. At the same time as Cameron highlighted and with the work that we do at 46, we understand that there is no singular youth culture. It's much more multifaceted, it's much more nuanced than that. And really we need to look at the spectrum and the differences of thoughts, attitudes and behaviours. Yeah, so almost looking at more from a psychographic than from a kind of demographic point yeah, of view yeah. almost. Um, and so, obviously, with these differences, how can brands take advantage, particularly from a 46 perspective? How, how can they take advantage of that? So, the first thing they can do is they can open themselves up. So, we, uh, Marcus mentions this a lot, and this is something they've done amazingly well at BBC, and particularly in the mixed tool that allow for open innovation and open creativity, where the thoughts of the users and the consumers and the customer are used to enhance the experience of the brand. So by putting people first and humans first, it provides the opportunity for growth and development. Yeah. What would you say? Yeah, I think as, as, as attitudes and opportunities change, clearly any brand, whether it's the BBC or any other brand, needs to also change its own attitudes. And, and, and I think really at the heart of this, which is why we do creativity, there's a relationship that's changing. Um, you know, it's much more close, it's much more personal, it's much more engaging. And I think that rather than, if you like, the traditional BBC model, which is the one I grew up with, was we would broadcast our genius at people. And, and we have an opportunity now, not just to listen back, but to potentially give people the tools of creativity and production so that we can focus on. So it's, it's, it's a changing relationship. And I think brands that pick that up and get the right tone and the openness and spirit of that will, will do well, I think. It's almost like a sense of involvement, isn't it? I think, I think absolutely. I think that rather than seeing consumers as people over there, as maybe we once did, mm. now we're much closer to them. You know, people on smartphones, they're able to talk back, they're yeah. able to create things and publish mm. things for themselves. So, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, guys, if you do have any questions um, for these guys, these are the experts here on connecting with youth culture. So if you do have a question, uh, then do send them through. I think we've got one already, so brilliant. Keep them coming. Yeah. Thank you, we'll, we'll ask that in a bit. Um, so guys, what, what do brands get wrong then? What, what's kind of like, you know, if you were to have a 101 on how not to connect to the youth, how, what would it be? Yeah, that's a very good one, yes. I can't say that the UC does only wrong. I do remember when we first kicked off, when we did our, we spoke to audiences with about our ideas. And it's quite painful sometimes, you sit behind a pane of glass and you're listening to people talking about your organisation. And I think one of the things that's stuck in my mind is, you know, if, if you're at a party with the BBC beer, it was that, it was the bloke in the corner who in a tweed jacket sort of thing. It's very respectable and, and all that, but, but maybe suddenly you're not going to want to hang out with that much. And I think, obviously, in a sense, there's a danger in that, which is the BBC then puts on a flowery shirt and dot dot dot, which is why we publish it it seems to me that yeah. you know, we, we have expertise in certain things and there's certain things that I can do and have done, but, but I don't know everything. And I think there's a little, little bit of humility and openness is probably a sign of the times now, which is why we've been having such a great collaboration with these guys. Brilliant. And I guess, you know, things are evolving so quickly yeah. that, you know, you can't, you can't have perfection really, it's constantly changing. So. Yeah, I, I, and I've sort of given up, if you like, trying to know everything. <laughs> and, and, and not that I ever did. But there was a time in which you felt that, that you could sort of access those things and understand. And now it's just really cool to go, do you know what? Mm. These guys know so much more about this stuff than me. Why don't I just ask them? Yeah. Why don't I just work together? Yeah. That's a much better way of doing it. And you guys obviously work with a number of brands. So, you know, is there anything that you see in terms of like, you know, quick reflexes that you think, no, 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 that's not how you do it? What, what are sort of the key things where brands go wrong? Yeah. So, number one on my list would be 
putting people at the last stage of production. So often, a, if a brand creates, produces, puts time, resources, and then gets feedback at the end stage, rather than putting people first, as Marta said, getting feedback, developing, editing, iterating, so that you've got a better product based on feedback, that would be... So an agile approach yeah. and with people at the, at the front and centre, would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I also think there's an element of just not trying too hard. I think yeah. a, a lot of brands just try too hard to be cool. And I, I don't think that, that kind of works anymore. It almost comes up as gimmicky. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you look at someone like Adidas, like Adidas Originals, they created a movement and like young people jumped on that movement. But I think when brands really try and like, connect in a way that's gimmicky and just not authentic, I think that's where I think that's where things start to fall apart. Would you say it has to kind of absolutely interlink with the brand's purpose. It can't just be, you know, I don't know, a tweed jacket company. Suddenly, you know, it, it needs to be related to their proposition, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you can't fake this stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't fake connecting with people. And I think that if you if you go about doing it that way, then it's, it's just not gonna work. Yeah. Um, Kian and, you know, Cam, you're both kind of a member of a very young, very vibrant and diverse um, agency. How do you approach different cultures and different backgrounds and the youth culture? Is there a particular way that you guys approach things? So the first thing we do, we're very solution agnostic, so we don't have a solution before we go in. Often we might have a hypothesis of what we want to do, what we want to achieve, but to start with, we leave it as open as possible. And as I said before, we try to get the people's views, see what they're thinking, and then base it on that. And the other part is the importance of diversity and divergent thinking. So we try to get as many people from different backgrounds. There's no point of getting one specific demographic because that in isolation doesn't paint the entire picture. Yeah, I agree. Um, and Martin, you know, we referred to kind of the quick evolution of the tech kind of sphere. How do you think that's kind of affecting you know, this current generation compared to previous generations? Well, I think it's massively challenging for organisations like the BBC. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when I started working in television, you know, you were kind of something because you'd tip up at a place to do an interview or to make a film. You'd have trucks, there'd be lighting, there'd be cameras, there'd be drama. You were really something when you tipped up. Um, now I think if we, with a smartphone and, and, and a bit of editing stuff, you know, you can make some really good stuff and I think that that's changed things a lot really and I think um, so that opening up of a few other tools of production have really altered our relationship to audiences no longer do we hold if you like everything in our own hands and, and I think that relationship then is one in which we certainly BBC want to encourage you know so what do we have well actually we, there are some skills and there are some things that we can find that we have a platform and we have a, you know so there's things that we can start to share and open up and I think that's very much the direction that we're trying to with Mixitor, which is a um, much closer, much more um, deeper engagement and perhaps a bit more humility as well about the creativity that other people who don't always have the same backgrounds as I've had and others have at ABC yeah. and, and being able to showcase that creativity as well. I think, so I think our role is changing, I think the technology is, is, is driving that and I think it's only going to be more so if you like. Yeah, so it's almost like a platform for co-creation. Yeah, right? absolutely. I, and that excites me. I mean, that's not necessarily the easy policy, but <laughs> I would direct the general. Yeah, I, think, I think there's something about being able to celebrate the creativity of people in our country, and it's, in, and it is huge. I think that, that too often it's being kept away, if you like, from broad, by broadcasters. Um, not by some great conspiracy, it's just sort of how it worked in the past, and it doesn't have to work that way. Yeah. And you, you kind of obviously are working on a peer-to-peer -peer online yeah. community. Yeah. Um, what other tech? Can, can brands kind of take advantage of to connect with new culture? Obviously, it's changing all the time. VR and AR and AI. What, what are the kind of the key tech that brands should explore? I guess I might not be answering your question directly, but for me, it's not as much about the tech itself because tech has always been the medium through which we do stuff. It's the principles of connection and connecting with people, which requires listening to them understanding their needs and then following that with producing and creating what they want together. So 
So you say data is kind of like the core of understanding, you know, getting insights, I suppose, yeah. to drive your approach. Just being open to what people say, yeah. Would you? Yeah, uh, I think from a more of a practical standpoint, like, I think brands can tap into just where young people are and just start to be genuinely non and honest with them and making that connection. So I think, like you said, that, that data point is, is so key for brands. Yeah, and Martin, would you say that that's true in terms of kind of ignore the tech, just think about, you know, the customer and what they're after and the insights go there? Yeah, I think we have to be aligned to the tech. I think you're right. I think that the, the, the data is generally, I think really we, we, we can learn so much more about our audiences, about their preferences, and of course, you know, that's a challenge for us to be seen in terms of kind of recommendations, how do we do that, how do we get the jokes, because, you know, we want to editorialise those to a certain extent so we can introduce people to potentially new things and stimulate so, so I think there's, there's a lot of thinking, obviously, that we're putting into how we use perhaps the data that we can clean, the technologies that people are using, how they're using it, and what, and what, how does that shape yeah. or how we approach and talk to our audiences in the future. Brilliant. Um, thanks to everyone who uh, might be tuned in or has just tuned in. Um, we're with 46, a young agency brand part of the Dense Media Network that joined us last year. Uh, we're also here with Martin Wilson from the BBC. So we're talking about how to connect with the youth culture and some of the, the benefits and the challenges of that. Um, one kind of question that I'm particularly interested in is obviously we talk about Gen Z as if you know, that behaviour is just you know, fundamental to that age group and it'll never change. Do you see that evolving particularly fast or in the immediate future? I, I see trends, I mean, what do I know, but you know, the, 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 the trends that you can see with, with Generation Z, and particularly around the, the, the um, access to the internet and the use of it and, and, and that greater sense of participation and empowerment and opening up worlds. And so I mean, you can see trends, you say, okay, people may be less engaged, say, politically, but, but not but, but very active around some causes and so on. And I think that having your voice heard, that helping to shape events, being a part of things feels to me a trend that will only continue actually and I think hooray for that to be honest with you. So much more greater de democratisation of the, 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 the conversation, the public conversation, I think it's a good thing. Brilliant. What about you guys? I would agree, like this generation coming up was born with technology, they were born with digital and yes. today they have access to all of the world's knowledge on their mobile phones and that's extremely empowering and democratising and at the same time past times brands have been able to dictate what's cool, what's trending but young people are now set in pace in terms of what's cool, what's in, yeah. what's out yeah. because they're no longer passive consumers, they are the creators, they're the producers and that's increasingly on the rise with Generation Z. So the roles have sort of switched haven't they? Would you say that's uh, the case now? Yeah, definitely. I think that's definitely the case. I mean, you know, if you look at platforms like Vine, for example, it yeah. broke so many different uh, creators. YouTube, for example, that's another great mm -hmm. one. You know, you have people like KSI and all those people within that YouTube world, and they're all creators of, of content. So I think the roles have definitely, definitely switched. Definitely. Um, you know, what are some of the kind of opportunities then for brands, given all the disruption that's happening with that shifting behaviour from a younger consumer, what would you say to me? Well, I think obviously the thing that I'm I think quite exercised about is, is I used to run creativity teams at the BBC as well, and there came a point where you know, you'd have the execs in there, and they were sort of, you know, say here's the thing, you can't do this, you can't, and in the end I just threw them out, because if you really want fresh ideas, challenging ideas, and, and more importantly, collision of ideas, perhaps, with the ability to create some fresh thing, you have to deliberately do something a bit differently. So, obviously, we used to put different people in, we used to empower people, maybe. So, and I think we can do that with technology now, that's sort of what we're trying to do with, with Mixital, really, is mm -hmm. invite people in, let's hear what people's ideas, let's, let's help shape those ideas, let's, let's feedback those ideas, there's things we can all know, we can develop our skills and so on. Yeah. So there's a bundle of things in there, which I think are really exciting, you know, obviously we're trying to do with this, this collaboration uh, with 46 and with others and we set up a youth panel and it wasn't just about sort of the usual kind of marketing thing of, of well let's get the insights and so on, it was trying to bring young people much more into the heart of things and under these guys we actually made a digital product and launched it with, with BBC's One Extra, uh, which, was, which is very cool and I think 
the thing we launched at the end was probably very different to something I would have conceived of yeah. and designed and shaped and, and, and hooray for that, because in a sense, you know, what do I know about what young people want? So I think there's something very exciting about that collaboration and partnership we can have with, with the young people. So it's kind of co-creation, but learning, but also brand engagement and yeah. actually getting them to yeah. find something. And, and I, think, I think for us is, is you know, so how much can we, can we add? We know we have editorial guidelines and so on and so forth, so it's not like everything can go. So every brand has to, has to also um, safeguard yeah. its reputation. So, so, so how do we do that? How do we open up at the same time? And I think that's a pretty intriguing thing for us all to, to, to look at. And so we're going in a particular direction on that yeah. with these guys and, and others, but you know, I'm not sure we may not be right, but we'll learn yeah. because yeah. we're giving it a go. Absolutely. And you guys obviously work with a number of brands. What are the kind of key opportunities that you raise with your clients? One thing that I see increasingly is that brands have spent years, decades, if not centuries, building up the brand itself, and they've got this great legacy of what it stands for. At the same time, there are these newcomers, these disruptors, and often they see them as competitors rather than enablers. So more and more we're seeing the opportunity for big established brands to work with startups and yeah. people on the ground to collaborate and create innovation and that for me is really exciting space. Yeah, they were talking about partnerships and how that was evolving for agencies at Mexico this past week and it was a very kind of um, big theme. Um, are there any other opportunities do you think that apart from the partnerships that brands should be thinking about? Um, just understanding what's happened, I think that's what there's a lack of. If you look at the recent example of Pepsi, we always bring this up when we talk about youth culture, it's just something that we always talk about when we thought you said That's out. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's just one of those things that was just done so poorly because they didn't have the information to understand what was actually happening at the time. So I think by having that connection with young people, building that bridge between young people and brands, I think that's when they really get the rich information that they need in order to produce adverts and creative or you know, enhance their products. Yeah, and you guys obviously, particularly in Four Six, you work with a lot of kind of young people um, as part of your kind of ongoing partnerships. What are some of the key things that you've learned from working with those with those communities? Something that I've learned personally is the importance of curiosity. Yeah, and it's so significant. When you're younger, you ask a lot more questions, which means you get a lot more answers and you increase your knowledge. As we grow older, we become a bit more cynical and we believe in stuff, but we stop questioning stuff. And for me, that is so important to stay fresh, to stay relevant, and to keep growing. You need to keep asking questions. Yeah, would you say? In agreement with that. Definitely, I mean, you can't shut yourself off from that, or else you're never going to learn what's actually happening inside these cultures. And I think you definitely have to be open, even just dropping, even if it's a big brand, you have to forget that you're a big brand for a moment yeah. and just really understand what's happening. Don't rest on your laurels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, with Mix It All, you must yeah. be learning a lot. Yeah, well. absolutely. And sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable, I must be honest. And I think that. You know, as Cam just said, you know, if you're a big fan like the BBC, you got to kind of get you don't know everything. And I think we used to come to these guys, we'd have a youth panel and we'd be very pleased with some of the stuff that we were we were planning and we could just see looks on the faces sometimes. Which is like, <laughs> that really sucks. <laughs> and and if you don't listen to that, you know, you can spend a lot of time and energy doing the sort of the wrong things. And I think so I think that that challenge a bit uncomfortable, but but you know, we, we kind of work through some of those 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 things. And I think that's a very good way of staying honest. So I, I, I would say there's there's something very grounding about working very closely with, if you like, your, your, your target audiences. Um, but, but just on a personal note, it's just been a great joy, obviously, working with these guys. And I say to my to my to my boss some time ago, so uh, there's more more and more about all the internal meetings I have to do, which is my favourite time of the month. It's where we get to get we get together. We, because we, we have we have a lot of fun about this. this is a, it's, there's a lot of stuff that's that's not around, some of it great, some of it not so great, but that you, that you can see a consensus yeah. that's around something which is perhaps you wouldn't have thought of in the first place, and I think that's really exciting. So stimulating. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thanks very much for tuning in. If you do have more questions, send them through. We've got one through. Um, I guess this is directed more at 46. What's kind of the work that you're most proud of today? 
Martin's here. I'm going to have to say. He's the right answer. He's definitely the right answer. Martin's the 46 channel with BBC Mix. Yeah? Yeah. And has he seen anything come out of Mix Tool that you're particularly like, wow, I, I, I think, yeah, because again, you know, we, we've, we've built tools to help people to, to, to write and publish it with, with, with a brand like Doctor Who or Strictly or EastEnders. And I think, you know, we built the tools within certain constraints, thinking people will create these kind of things. And then you see people using things and posting things that you didn't imagine was possible in certain order. And for me, I personally get very stimulated by that because I just think, you think, crikey, how do we sort of pick that? And I, and I think the challenge about the BBC is that how then do we use that creativity? Yeah. And then there's a great idea in there, like for a show or, or a documentary or something like that. And I think that, you know, I don't think we've properly explored this area. I'm very excited about doing it. It's great. It's more to go with it. Perfect. Um, we've got another question through. It's a little bit more of a challenging one, but a lot of businesses find it difficult to create authentic messages that actually kind of resonate. So, what advice can you guys give brands regarding that authenticity around the content and the channels they use? Um, just diving deeper into what's actually happening. I mean, I know mean, that's part of what we do as 46, but even just having a few young people. You know, asking them what's actually happening in their lives, what's actually happening in their culture, just to get a deeper understanding of what they're actually affiliated with. And I think using that information, you can use it for, for the better. Yeah. Would you say that that's kind of a good approach for all brands, including BBC? To kind of... uh, I do. I think, there's a, I think there's a really strong sense of integrity when, when I meet young people and work with them. And I, and I don't even know that I just think that that there's because it's easier to access information, it's easier to, to talk to friends and to get and to pick up you know, in conversations that, you know, I think people are less likely to be good at if you like. And I think that there's a greater emphasis on, if you like, the context, what, what is the mission of that brand or the company. So it's not, yes, it's got to work well, it's got to do the job, it says, no, it mustn't cost much money, please. But as well, you know, it's got to do something good, I think, ideally. You know? yeah. it's, got to, it's got to be a force for the good. And I think that, Brands that can tune into that, and I think that you know, in a sense, we have a red made thing with BBC because it's only set up to do good things. But 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 it's, it's that sense. So it's, it's more of a challenge for commercial organisations, clearly, which yeah. is you know how can you how can you have that relationship that is um, you know more a partnership and yet at the same time it's a commercial one where they need to to, to make money. How do you, how do, and I, I don't have an answer. I think it's a really interesting challenge though. But, it feels to me that those brands that are able to tune into that and tell a story about themselves and what they're doing and so on and so forth, that's part of me as being a strength. Yeah. And I think it's kind of keeping that audience in mind. So, you know, what matters to them and what matters to us and where can we kind of meet in the middle, I suppose. And it was interesting at New Mexico last week, Mark Pritchard from PG actually talked very much about you know, brands being forced for good. So, um, clearly, a very kind of the zeitgeist, I suppose, of, of the marketing industry. Cool. So um, I have one question of my own, actually. So uh, if I were a CMO and I was watching this, like you know, I thought, oh great, okay, what do I do? What's the next step for, for engaging with youth culture? What do you guys think? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you guys, surely. <laughs> spring up forty six. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think I think it's that that that. that. It's because it, it, if it's not just us, it's just marketing, but, 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 the, but doing those audience insight pieces, but actually rubbing shoulders, working, collaborating with young people in the workplace, I think that challenges the culture. I think it changes, you know, and, and, and you have to do it in, in, in an honest way, I think, you know, and, 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 take this. and that doesn't mean sort of the day job goes out the window, but, but, but I think it's a challenge for all of us, which is how organisations can, can, can be true to their brands, but at yeah. the same time, enable innovation and disruption uh, in, in, in that culture too. And I'm not sure we've got it right for BBC, I'm not claiming that, I just think that it's a really interesting notion and I think if we can do that then then, then you can move the organisation on into a, into, a, into a better space. Brilliant. So what's next for Mixit or what's next on the horizon? Well I think you know, innovation, experimentation, and the, I the lovely word is, I have no idea. <laughs> um, you know, we, we are um, really just keen to see um, best ways to engage with, with people, to inspire people, to get creative, to give them the confidence to do that. <coughs> but also, you know, how we might reward people at the BBC. Because I, you know, one of the insights is, well, why would I spend a lot of time making a you know, the BBC? What, what, you know, 
what do I learn, what do I get, yeah. give me access to, to another job or to some training things. So I think we've got a lot to think about in terms of how we get that relationship right. Yeah. We have got it right, how do we do that? And I think that's one of the things we're going to learn over the next few months. Brilliant. Well, very exciting. I encourage everyone to go and check out Mixed Tool, especially the 46 channel, obviously. <laughs> uh, what about 46? What's next on the horizon for you guys? So, we have just built a community of young creatives called Stripes. Stripes is a community of thousand young creatives from different walks of life providing their raw, unfiltered perspective on what's happening and why. And what's next is we're making that real and we're bringing it to life. Brilliant. Well, that's exciting. Very much kind of a mirroring of what BBC is doing. So, yeah, yeah perfect. Can we anything else from 46? Um, loads of content to be coming up. Yeah. Especially a lot of content of us actually engaging with young people on the street and going to where they are in their natural places and just yeah understanding what's happened in their culture. So lots of content's come out on social media. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. I know that I've really enjoyed this, and I'm sure I hope many of you have also enjoyed it. Thank you for your questions. Um, that's it for today, and we'll see you again next month when we'll be talking to 360i. Bye for now. Cheers. <laughs>